Father, while the war is raging, we already have the victory in Jesus Christ. So, Father, God, as we study tonight, help us to be filled with your power, uh, reassured by the weapons of our warfare. They are mighty to God. Bless those who are here and those who are on the way. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, we have somewhat of a guest in here. She's not really a guest, but, uh, but uh, just tell me about who you are. But just tell me about who you are now. And then she brings Randy. Amen. So I'm gonna call on I'm gonna call on Sister Vicky to give her a solid rock welcome. And get undressed. That's right. Put it out there. Amen. Amen. So, so we're glad to have you. And last time we talked, we we're doing a series called Spiritual Warfare. And, and what we understand is that there's an unseen battle going on. The moment you accept Christ, the moment you start to step out, the devil goes to work. Amen? Amen. And, and listen, as we're going to be studying tonight, the devil even had the audacity to tempt Jesus. So what makes you think he's not going to come after you? Amen? Am I right about it? But what I love about it is that we're fighting, listen to me, let's say amen. We are fighting a foe that has already been defeated. Watch this, y'all. And not only has he been defeated, he knows he's defeated. What he wants to do is, is take as many of us down with him as possible. This lesson here is to help us to not uh, go into that. So we're going to be talking tonight. Uh, we're walking through this uh, spiritual warfare Bible study, and we're going to be starting. We talked about detecting the deceiver. Really good lesson last night. And then we're tonight we're talking about facing temptation. How many of you have faced temptation? If you haven't raised your hands, you're not telling the truth. Amen. <laughs> and we're going to talk about certain strategy, the armor of God, the word within, defeating the destroyer, overcoming our accusers, and then finally at the end, we're going to stand firm. Amen. Amen. So. Our lesson tonight is facing temptation. Everybody, I don't care how spiritual you are, is going to face temptation. Amen? Amen. 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 And as a matter of fact, the, the closer you get to God, the more temptation you are more likely to face. Am I right about it? Amen. Don't think you're so spiritual that just because you're in church, the, uh, the devil will tempt you. Like the devil going to say, well, I see her going to church. I'm going to leave, leave her alone until she gets back home. No. He's going to tempt us all the time. So here it is. Uh, what I want to do, y'all have probably seen this before, but I want y'all to watch it again. Uh, how many of you have seen the movie Courageous? Have you seen it? Okay, you've seen it. But there's a story about this guy named Javier, right? And he got a, a good job. He's doing really well. And his boss offers him a promotion. Yet there is a catch. Amen? There's a catch. He needs to give a false report. And I want to try to watch this video, then we'll discuss it, okay? So y'all hang in with your pastor, and we're going to set this thing up. All right? We're going to set this up. Let's 
set this up. Is everybody here okay? Martinez, yeah. have a seat. Thank you, sir. You've been very productive your first month here. Doing good work. I'm very grateful to be here. Yeah. Well, Mr. Martinez, the reason I called you in here is that I'm looking for an additional manager to oversee inventory and shipping. It carries more responsibility, but it pays more. Sound like something you might be interested in? Yes, I would. But before I make my final decision, I'd like for you to work a shift in that department next week. You'll see a list of 17 crates coming in on this sheet. One of those crates will be going to a separate warehouse. Mr. Martinez, when you report the inventory, I'd like for you to report that we received 16 crates. Ooh, 17 are coming in. Ooh. But you want me to write down 16? Yeah, that's right. I have another purpose for the extra crate. You are on my team, right? Because I really can't use people who aren't on my team. Well. Tell you what. You think about it tonight and give me your answer in the morning. Make it 10 o'clock. But I'll need to know if you really want this job. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Now, we understand what's going on. 17 to come in, we want you to what? Thank you. All right, so here it is the next day, 10 a.m. Hey, Amen. It's going to be 10 a.m. soon. All right, 10 a.m. 10, 9, 8, 7. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Martinez. How are you this morning? Fine, thank you. How are you? I don't know yet. Please, have a seat. I trust you had time to think about our conversation yesterday. Yes, sir, I did. And what did you decide? Are you on my team? Well, Mr. Tyson, I am very grateful to have a job here. But I cannot do as you have asked. And why is that? Because it is wrong, sir. And it would be dishonoring to my God and my family to lie in that report. Do you understand what this may do to your job here? Yes, sir, I do. Javier, may I shake your hand? Young man, you just gave me the right answer. I've been looking for someone to manage inventory and shipping, and quite frankly, you were the last person on my list. But I need somebody I can trust. Will you take the job? We'll adjust your pay. I'd be honored to, sir. Good. Then the job is yours. Now, Walter will go over all the specifics with you, and I'll make the announcement to the staff on Monday. Congratulations, Javier. Oh, and Javier, thanks for your integrity. It's rare. Well done, Javier. After six times, I was getting discouraged. All right, all right. Um, okay, let's get into our questions. You guys understand the clip there? Very interesting concept. It's almost like what what would you do that ABC does? But um, anyway. Um, Really quickly, what was the, um, the dilemma that Javier was facing? What was the dilemma? What was the dilemma? What was the dilemma? What's the dilemma? What's the dilemma? Yeah, he just got his job, right? And he's offered a promotion, right? But in order to get the promotion, he would have to lie. He had to lie, tell some untruths. He wants to take care of his family, right? And it might be just a little, why do I? What's the harm in that, right, did you say? Yeah, doesn't matter what color it is, right? Amen. So here it is. How does Javier respond to the boss's offer and why? 
How's he respond? Turn to death. And but here's the important part. Why? What does he say? It's wrong too. To God and his family. Yeah, and that's important because as I've often been told, God, listen, we need to live as if God watches us 24-7 because guess what? He does. He does. Amen? Amen? And so, go ahead. Go ahead. That's a very obvious situation. But I want to provide with the operations. You know, oh. uh, something goes out and comes back $2 million gets returned. Should go into return right away so everybody sees it. I would say most of the corporations I work for would say, wait, wait, wait. Let's just bring it back. Yeah. And figure something out. Now, do you, do you say no? Well, let me let me say this. Let me say this, Sam. This is being recorded, so you're confessing, no? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but yeah, but you make a good point because we all been sitting there and say, okay, this, I would never do that. But Peter said the same thing, didn't he? Oh, Lord, I, I would never deny you. That man had a word of the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. His integrity meant more to him Woo. than what they got from the Lord. And then he's going to find out the ball was the trick Wow, not a trick for the test. Come, okay. up to, come up to the front of the class. You're doing really good. Um, <laughs> so, what was the boss's response? What was the boss's response? He was shocked because they did it, what, six times before. But he was pleasantly shocked. And what else? What else was his response? Yeah. Listen, may I shake your hand because I admire that what? Integrity. Because I need somebody I can trust. And he said that kind of integrity in the day and age we live in is Rare. Sure. That do you think that had any reflections on his nationality? I'm sorry. Do you think that had any reflection on his nationality? No, I don't. Now let me say this. That I, I kind of see what you mean. I think is that it was designed to his God and his family, and so that's something we need to think about too. Because when I was coming up. If you carry the keys, then there was a certain way you needed to deport yourself, right? right? And right. so, so there was an honor due to him that was probably instilled to him by his father. Yeah, so that, that's a very good point. Um, now, here's the question for y'all and us, me, us. How can you use our faith, right, to help us in these difficult decisions? I forget. Yeah, I did, I cut out the part we talked to his wife. His wife was saying, hold up, Hobby, we need this job. <laughs> so the first time we've been able to pay our bills. <laughs> Maybe it's not really wrong. So sometimes even your closest folks will try to get you to and make up logical ideas. But our faith has got to be greater than our feelings. It's got to be greater than our feelings. Jesus models that. In the garden, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Lord, not my will, but yours be done. You had a point. Yeah, the, uh, the other the related issue is the circumstances. Mm, yeah. Sometimes there are circumstances, current circumstances, that beg for you to make a decision that you know the Holy Spirit is telling you is wrong. So part of what we need to understand is that sometimes you, you will be faced with these situations, but the you have trust in God and stick to what He has told you you should do in terms yeah. of how you live your life. You'll be all right. Yeah, and that's important for, and that's why as believers in Christ, right? We are not heard somebody say we're not weird. We're weird. We're not weird. We're peculiar. Right? And that means we belong to God. And there's a certain way that we act that's gonna look peculiar to people who don't know Christ. The problem is not y'all, because y'all some good Christian folks. The problem is there's too many folks in the church who don't like like being in the church. Yeah. Oh, they can shout and sing and cry and fall out in the sanctuary, but we'll cuss you out in the parking lot. But not y'all. Got it? So everybody gets tested, right? And if you haven't, guess what? Renee, why are you laughing at? But anyway, um, 
Here it is. We're going to look at Matthew's gospel. Let's go and go over the overview really quickly. Matthew was the first gospel in the New Testament, not the first gospel written, but he is, he was Levi, a former what tax collector, and God called him and said, "Hey man, drop what you're doing and what follow me." And he did it, and God used him tremendously. He wrote this about AD 55, AD 65. And the purpose was, he is a Jew, right? And he wants to show his fellow Jews that, look, the guy y'all crucified, he is the Messiah that God prophesied about in the Old Testament. He's the Messiah. That's why you see a lot of Old Testament uh, scriptures in Matthew's gospel. And so here it is. Matthew's gospel shows us the core teachings of Christianity. If you want to know what Christ is all about, what following Jesus is all about, you can start in the book of Matthew. It tells you how to live, right? You do those Beatitudes, all the other things. Talks about divorce, remarriage, sexual immorality. Talks about end times. Talks about everything. You can find that in Matthew's gospel. Here it is. The logical outline style makes it easy to locate discussions on various topics, like I just talked about. If you want to know how to pray, there's a portion of Matthew's gospel that teaches you how to pray, and we call that the what? The Lord's Prayer, right? How to forgive. Is that in there? Amen. It's, it's all in there. It's like prego, the spaghetti sauce. It's in there. <laughs> okay. Um, Matthew demonstrates how Christ fulfills the Old Testament prophecy. We'll talk about that. So that's Matthew's gospel, a high overview. I want to do some other high overview stuff here as we talk about when Jesus was first baptized. The next thing in the next chapter comes the temptation from the devil. Yeah. Very nice thing. And so here it is. I want to point this out. Um, as soon as he gets baptized, right? What happens? Holy Spirit comes down. The Father said, this is my what? Beloved Son in whom I am what? Well, please, what's the next thing that happens? Here comes Satan. Am I right about it, Sam? Yeah, build a building, right? Do a church dedication. And guess who shows up? Satan. <laughs> Amen. Offering Jesus. Look, listen, you hungry after you fasted 40 days. Turn these stones into bread. Right? We'll talk about that later. Then another temptation. Look, he takes him up to a high mountain and says, look, you are the son of God, right? Throw yourself down. God will protect you. Another temptation, right? And then this last one. Listen, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth. All you, this is, ooh, here it is. All you got to do is fall down and worship me. That's an offer you got to... That's one that we get a lot. Yeah, yeah. And it's subtle, isn't it? Very subtle, very subtle. Now, any questions about the temptation? Let me show you the correlation between God's temptation, Jesus' temptation, and what happened in the garden. You know what happened in the garden, right? Like, there was a test, and did we pass that test? No, we failed at what? Miserable. Right, but here it is. Look, the fall of man in the garden, right? Here it is. The woman saw the tree and the fruit, and it was good for what? Food. Here's Satan temptation of Jesus. If you're the son of God, turn these stones into what? Same temptation. Here it is. It's pleasing to the eye. I'll give you all these kingdoms if you would just what? I'll show you everything. I'll give it to you. It's pleasing to the eye. And then, also desirable for gaining wisdom. That was the fruit. And here's sent Satan's temptation. If you're the son of God, throw yourself down. Prove to everybody who you are in Christ, right? In God, right? But here it is. Eve and Adam, Adam and Eve, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go there today. She took some and ate it. She gave it to him and he ate it. Now look what, this is your point, Deacon Look what Jesus says when he gets that offer. What does he say? Get a what? Away from me. Right? Get out of here. For it's written, worship what? God and serve him only. So I want to show you all this because when man failed, Jesus what? Passed the test. On our behalf, somebody ought to say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Julie. Let him know. And so that's what that's what that, that that's why that temptation is so important. He passed the test that we all fail. And that's why he's a great savior. Amen. That's why we don't walk in our own righteousness. We walk in his righteousness. 
Well, some of y'all to give God praise in the house. Is it Sunday yet? Okay, here it is. So who wants to read the scriptures today? Uh, just 11 verses. Let's get into that. From the NIV. Who wants to read today? Who wants to read today? Anybody? Everybody read NIV. Sure. Oh, I hear you. You'll read from there. Okay. You can read wherever you want. Uh, sure. Then Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Mm. After fasting 40 days, he was. He was hungry. Yeah. The tempter came to him and said, it. If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered, It is written, Man should not live on bread alone. But every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Oh, sorry. Here we go. If. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. Mm. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their, in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered them, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. No. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All of this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and save him only. Well, then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. Amen. Oh, now, he so <laughs> <laughs> he's one of our biggest All right, well, here it is. So here it is. Satan, I mean, Jesus at his greatest point of his ministry at this point. I mean, he got baptized, right? The Spirit of God came down. Even the Father God said, look, y'all, this is my beloved son. Whom I'm what? Well, That's a very high point, isn't it? But then what, it, what happens after this, it says the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. He led him into the temptation. He led him into it. Uh, some uh, translators say he drove him into the, into the wilderness. Why, why do you think that Jesus, full of the Spirit of God, the Son of the living God, why would the Spirit drive him to face the devil's temptation? Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Why, well, why would God allow that? Why would the Spirit do that? One of them would be because human beings would be tested. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, all of us will. So he, he's a great Savior and high priest wants to identify with us. What are some other reasons? Think about God's, I'm a, think about God's purposes, right? I wish Ray was here. I wish Ray was here because Ray's an engineer, right? But you guys are smart people. If I wanted to build a bridge, yeah, that's smart. If I, if I wanted to build a bridge that could withstand 30,000 tons, what's the maximum weight I should build to withstand? 40,000. Over 30,000. Yeah, 30, yeah 50,000, 60,000, right? Now, when I design it that way, I already know it can handle the weight. I just want to prove it to what? To y'all. Mm -hmm. Got it? It's God's purpose. It's God's purpose for him to be tested. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And how about how about God, right? Here's Jesus. This is Thomas Keys. He's powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Can he do what? All things? Yeah. He could talk to Satan with just one word and, and just get him out of here. Mm -hmm. Right? But he comes in with the same weapons that you and I have. Yeah. And, 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 and let, me, let me give you all these things real quick because I put these down. See, this is God's purpose. Right? Tempted may mean tested to show us that our God is pure and holy and will not sin. Got it? And to demonstrate God's power. How did Jesus defeat all of Satan's temptations? With the, come on down there, with the word of God. And yeah, but let me tell you something. He, you, ever, you ever fight your little brother and you tell him, man, I'm going to beat you with one hand tied behind my back. That's kind of like what Jesus did. Like, listen, I ain't even got to come in with all of my power over 10,000 angels. I'm just going to beat you with my word. Good. Thank you. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And here it is. And here, and here's the other, for God's people, for us. So we were recognized that Jesus is the second Adam, as I showed you before. The first Adam messed it up. Jesus is the second Adam. He got it right. And to your point, Cousin Vicky, I like calling him Cousin Vicky. The point, Cousin Vicky, is that we have the same weapons available to us that Jesus used to get the victory. Oh, man, see, see, look, look, y'all. See, I'm from the hood, right? Hey, man, I'm from the hood. And see, see, you ain't really got to show your Glock all the time. All you got to do is let people know you got it. Amen. Y'all kiss, y'all, y'all kiss me, you know. But we got the word of the living God, and that is our weapon of warfare against Satan. And that's a weapon he cannot defeat good. This is the second test. Yeah. The first one was the family. The blood. And that is, I didn't look at it as the second test. That's why you got to pass it. That's why, that's why you got to pass it. So here it is. We, and what, to your point, Deacon Mickens, we do not have a high priest that cannot sympathize. With what we're going through. You ever talk to people, you try to encourage them, right? And you say, I know what you're going through, but you really don't. Because you haven't been through that, right? But Jesus Christ knows all about our struggles. Yet he was without sin. Now, see, you can talk to people who've been through some stuff but messed it up. I want to talk to somebody who's been through some stuff and got it right. <laughs> That's why we need to talk to Jesus. Tell them all about our Yeah. Questions, comments about that point? Yes? Did that take us back to our baptism? So that when we get baptized, we can be led by the Holy Spirit of God. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, to your point, as soon as you get baptized, guess, guess, what, man, guess what's coming? That's why we pray that, look, we pray for these people back here. Look, Lord, after they get baptized, come cover them, protect them. Because you're going to get tested, man. All right, here it is. Um, no question. The first temptation was what? Make these stones into... Now, why do you think, uh, why do you think Satan tempted him with that one? It's really easy. He was hungry. Because he, <laughs> he fasted for how many days? 40. 40 days. No water, no food. He is literally hungry. He was a man like us. But he's a God man. But he had hunger like we did. So... It doesn't really seem like it's wrong to eat bread. Why is that such a temptation? Why is that such a temptation? Why is that such a... He was on a fast, right? Mm-hmm. So one obvious thing is, obviously God just said the fast is not what? It's not over yet. It's over when I say it's over, not when the devil says it's Okay, what other, what other things? Yeah. Why, why is that such a, such a temptation? First of all, you don't want to prove nothing to the devil. I'm not proving nothing to you. <laughs> right? I'm not proving nothing to you. I'm not living by, by bread. I'm living by the what? By the word. Yeah. Here it is. He had driven Jesus to, out to test, or, and I, I put this word here, to prove his obedience. Not to test it per se, but to prove it so we would know he's a trustworthy Savior. And then secondly, the God, God said the fast ain't over. And let me tell y'all, so I do a fast for 40 days. Relax. I do a fast 40 days, right, during Lenten, the Lenten season. And then when I was working at, 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 uh, at the labor ministry, invariably, right after Lent, they would have an all-you-need pizza bar. <laughs> that was the best-smelling pizza in my life when I'm on a fast. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> but the fast went over there. And, and Satan is going to suggest you to take a what? Take a shortcut. We'll talk about that later. The temptation, and this is this is a big point here, is to try to make meet a legitimate need in a what? Illegitimate way. The Lord is my shepherd, I see what I, you know what I'm saying? Satan wants you to eat bread now instead of waiting for God to have for you later. There's a story about uh, this kid who was bugging his mom and dad for something to eat at the amusement park. They were going to the hamburger stand, and she was like, oh, she wanted some cotton candy. So they finally acquiesced her, gave her the cotton candy. She ate it all, but you know cotton candy. You can eat it, but it doesn't last. So by the time she got to the hamburger stand, she was still hungry. Everybody else was eating. 
Don't fall for Satan's cotton candy. Don't even fall for cotton candy preaching. Okay, here it is. Watch the one here. Watch this, y'all. By denying bread, denying his own hunger, he retained his righteousness and lived by submission to God's word. Whenever you give in to your hunger out of God's will, you're going to lose your righteousness. And what that means, you'll lose opportunities. You'll, there's things that God wants to give you that he has to delay for a while. Amen. And so sometimes you got to hang in there until you what? Until you change time. You got to hang in there. You got to hang in there, even though it's tough. You got to hang in there. And you'll find that if you hang in there, uh, God will bless you real good. Amen? Amen. Jesus understands what it's like to be hungry. He knows what that's like. You know, and I could really say a whole lot of stuff, but I'm going to keep this PG as much as possible. So, uh, <laughs> let me get out of here. Okay, number three. <laughs> Sometimes we mess up and we fall into temptation because we're not trusting God to meet our needs. The person that comes to mind, first of all, to me is Abraham and Sarah. Abraham, look, I know y'all old. God said, look, y'all gonna have a child. But they thought they were what? It's taking too long, God, so we're gonna what? Help you out. So, hey, God, so, so Abraham, here's my young maid, Hagar. What do you think about sleeping with her? Hmm. <laughs> Sounds good to me. That's all I wanna say about that. But trying to, trying to, y'all missing up my Bible study. Uh, trying to meet an illegitimate need. When we don't trust God, how can we be tempted to go after something that God, you know, he has for you, but he doesn't have it that way? How can we be tempted? How can we be tempted? What, first of all, what tempts us in the first place? Thank you, Julie. If you're tempted, it's already what? In you. Oh, you made me curse. No, I didn't curse it in your heart. <laughs> oh, you hear that? It's already in you, right? It's already in you. What else? I want to be, you got the person. Bam! Designs of our, and what, here's the point that, that got me. When we have illegitimate, well, when we have legitimate desires and we're tempted to, to, to go in a different direction, Satan fans the flames. When your lust start burning, Satan starts, yeah, all right. <laughs> Till you get a case I just couldn't help let me give y'all another one. Let me give y'all another one. Um, to enticement. See, once Satan see that this will catch your eye, right? He'll keep what? Showing it to you. I tell this to her all the time. Women didn't never talk to me at all until I put one of these on. <laughs> as soon as I got married, they're like, oh, hi. <laughs> Somebody don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but if I fall into that, like you can't entice somebody with something they don't want. Gotcha. Now see, see, some of us get sanctimonious, right? We see somebody get enticed by something because that's not what we're enticed with. And we forget you got some enticements too. Got it? Why oh, y'all so quiet? Here. Tell me what extravagance. Here's something that I, that I studied this out, right? It pushes something that's good. To something that is no good. Let me give y'all an easy one. Eating is good. Isn't it eating good? I love to eat. But if you eat what? Too much. <laughs> right? Yeah. See, good. You know, I always say, why does someone need a billion dollars? Yeah. One billion would be enough. But because you don't have the money. Yeah. Maybe with yourself, you start to make some money. And you want more money. Yeah. You want more money. It may not be a billion, but you're tempted to get two billion. To make that money. Yeah, because we know you're close to one billion, Sam. We already know that. And all my years of being an accountant, I never had any cash. Nothing. Yeah. Thank <laughs> <laughs> Tell the reason, but, but here's but to your point, you're right. I mean, once we once we get stuff, we automatically want what? More. More. Watching TV can be good, right? There's some there's some on TV, but if all you do is what? Watch TV, you'll miss Bible study. 
just trying to talk to somebody. <laughs> well, no, sleep is good, right? We need sleep. We do. But if you sleep too much, you become what? Lazy. Stop taking care of what? Business. Right? And, and power is good. But if you get drunk on power, stop mistreating people. Hey, uh, Pastor, I think Satan knows what we like. Yes. So he puts it in front of us visually. Yes. And uh, God knows exactly what is best, best yes. for us. But, and we can't sometimes see that yeah. unless we study our work, uh, the word itself. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. And we constantly go through life like that. Being, because the flesh is weak. Our heart, we can change at the flip of the limit. Yeah. And we constantly pay for that in our life until we come to know where we have to sit back, study, contemplate, and our conscience gives us uh, God. And, and to your point, how we build that conscience up is by staying in the presence of God. Yes. You gotta stay stay in the presence of God in prayer. You gotta get in the word for yourself, get in the word in situations like this. You gotta be at church on Sunday. You know what I'm saying? When you stop coming to church, when you stop uh, uh, pressing into God, guess what's gonna press into you? Satan's gonna he's gonna he's gonna feel good with you. Right? You gotta back to and he said, well, the devil made me do it. Ah. And I said, you know, you had that desire to do it anyway. All the devil did was whisper in your little push. Yeah. That's what he did. He whispered push. you. Push. He made your desire. He increased your desire oh. to do what you wanted to do in the first place. Yeah, and you know what? Sometimes the devil, this, I say this all the time, sometimes the devil puts some stuff on y'all and he laughs at us. He said, man, I can't believe y'all oh. fell for that again. I don't, it works every time. Oh. Y'all ain't got it yet. But here it is. Let me get this, this caveat here. Um, temptation itself is not a sin. Okay, everybody gets tempted. Everybody does, right? If you, if you say I'm not tempted, you're tempted to lie. Amen. So, uh, <laughs> but here it is giving in to the temptation. That's that's the thing. Okay. All right. So don't overly condemn yourself when you hear Satan's whispers, because you won't stop being tempted until you get on the other side of the room. Got it? And it helps my. All right, here it is. Number four. The second temptation, Satan actually uses scripture. Let me help y'all. Satan knows more scripture than you do. (laughs) Okay? Some of the best false teachers can quote scripture backwards and forward, but the only thing is they quote it backwards, right? Now, now what does he say in verses five and six? Listen, throw yourself down, because the scriptures say, if you throw yourself down, right? The angels will what? Yeah, they, they, will, they will lift you up. So does, does the devil misquote scripture like people often, often say? Does he misquote it? No. No. No, what does he do with it? It's out of context. Out of context. He misapplies it. He quoted Psalm 91, but he uses it to get Jesus to test or tempt God. Let me show you how this works. I was a, I do a prayer meeting with pastors every Tuesday, not every Tuesday, every month. We go to the Capitol, we pray for all of the representatives and senators that we meet. I was late, amen, and I said, well, look, I'm parking on the street, but I'm going to a prayer meeting, so I'm trusting God that the parking people won't put a ticket on my car. <laughs> Since y'all laughing, I kind of know how that worked out. <laughs> I had to pay the ticket in the name of Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Got it? I was in the name of Tom Keys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, name Tom Keys. Yeah. So, but but even though somebody uses scripture, right, he'll misquote it to get you to do stuff that God don't want you to do. Okay, how else does he do? He misapplies the context, right? But then he has a malicious conviction. What do I mean by that? His purpose in using the scripture is not what? God's purpose. His purpose is for his purpose. And his purposes are always bad for what? Us. Amen. Amen. He's our what? Amen. Enemy. And enemies don't want anything good for you. He gets Jesus to try to use scripture to go against scripture. Satan always try to get you to step outside who God says you are. And he'll use scripture to do it. You the head and not the 
the tail and get you to go in debt. <laughs> Am I right about the tail, <laughs> Right? You're supposed to be blessed and highly favored. You get a house and a car you can't afford. And the next thing you have to all the pastor, pray for my foreclosure. You know? <laughs> that would have my nose bump up. I said, oh, yeah. And then here it is. He has a malign conclusion. What I mean by that is Satan wanted Jesus to demonstrate. He wanted him to be praised as the Messiah without going to the cross to save us. He wants to get you off of your purpose, off of God's divine purpose for you. And let me help all of us, and myself included. God has a divine purpose for you. Let me, let me get over here so I can talk to the camera. Everybody watch me. God has a, a, a divine purpose for you. Don't let God, listen, God has a divine purpose for solid rock. Let's not let him thwart that purpose. Here it is. That's why we got to what? Study. I love how King Jimmy puts it. Study. To show yourself what? Not to me, but to God. Now, this is the preachers, but it applies to all of us. You got to know how to what? Rightly divide it so you can tell when somebody's pulling their what? Out of context. Okay? Yeah, okay. David had a dozen wives. I can have a dozen wives too. No, that's out of context. First of all, that's crazy. Why would you want more than one? <laughs> Let me, ooh, I'm going to get, ooh, Okay. <laughs> Are you all right? <laughs> let, me, let me escape while it's good. Okay, uh, number five. He responds that you shall not what? Tempt the Lord your God. There's a difference between testing God or tempting God and what? Trusting God. See, what I did was stupid. You know, oh, I'm going to do a prayer meeting. I'm not going to pay the parking. Yeah, okay, that was that was trusting God. That was doing. <laughs> Y'all need to pray for your pastor. So when we test God, let me just give you these. When you test God, it de you demand He take care of you, despite the stupid stuff that you do. Lord, I'm gonna leave my car unlocked and the engine running. Protect my car, right? You be praying for another car after a while. Keep doing that, right? And so requests become, we see this requests on television all the time, Sister Deborah. These preachers holler at God like you're two years old. Jesus, you come down here right now. No, no. <laughs> request, they don't request things of God. They what? Demand things. No, he's a sovereign God. Say again? Yeah, a cosmic bellboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ringing. You come down. No, that's not how it works. Trust, it, watch this, y'all. It, it becomes complaints. Lord, why ain't you helping me? Lord, if you don't come through by Sunday, I'm never going back to church. Why me? Yeah, why me? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so here's another one obedience gives way to rebellion. Instead of obedience, Obeying God, we start what? Rebelling against God. Right? In other words, God tells you to trust and wait, and you push your head anyway. Right? God tells you to submit and come under leadership, and you say, I'm, I'm a man of God. I don't listen to man. I don't listen. Pushes you into rebellion. Rebellion is a, is a sin of witchcraft, y'all. And you can be spiritually rebellious. I'm so spiritual, I'm not coming to church. <laughs> I've said I've said the spirit, they, they too spiritual to go to church. So spiritual it hurts. Right? And here it is. Here's the last one. Um, therefore, Jesus said, listen, you don't have to be worrying or fretting or demanding. Oh, that's what the Gentiles, that's what people who don't know God do. Amen. People who know God and know that He'll provide for your needs. You just do what he says in obedience and wait on him. Watch the job because God already what? Knows what you need before you. I remember I was going over to pick my late brother Ted's computer, right? 
I went over to his house and I could smell the fried fish in the hallway. I came into the house, all the plates were put away, kitchen was so clean. I was mad too. I was like, <laughs> my brother said, look, man, we knew you was coming. There's a plate of fish in the oven, <laughs> some potato salad in the inner We knew you was coming. God knows we what? Need those things? We don't have to worry or fret. God will provide for us. Don't you provide for your kids? Right? God says y'all evil. I didn't, but that's what he said. Y'all evil. Y'all provide for your kids. How much more will I provide for you? Y'all did Now, 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 now I don't, y'all don't need to help y'all. I don't need to help y'all with this one. What does it mean to trust God? What does it mean to trust God? Come on, y'all. Anybody here trusting God? What does it mean to trust God? What does it mean to trust Him? Come on, help me, help me, Pastor. What does it mean? Have faith. Have faith, no matter what it looks like. Yeah, what else does it mean to trust God? Believe. Believe it, right? Believe it and give us what we need. What? We need. When we need it. Not when we want it, but when we need it. And then look, we can trust Him because we don't know how He's going to do it. But we know He will. And He may even do it in ways that we may not. He may use somebody who don't like you to bless you. He can do it anyway. So that's what it means to trust God. Amen. When you trust him, y'all, we rely on him. We rely on him to meet our needs. What? Good. His way. You trust God and you rely on him. You're not afraid. Yeah. Yeah. To meet our needs his way. And watch this. Meet our needs in what? His timing. Because his timing is always on time. He's an on time God. Yes, he is. He may not come in here. But here, y'all need to smile when you say that. Okay, here it is. Um, uh, we rely on. Here's the part. This one made me. This one made me shout right here, Paul. We can rely on him to work. How many things out? Whether they be good or bad, because ultimately they're going to work for. Come here, Joseph. Sold into slavery in Egypt, he becomes what? A ruler in Egypt. Right? Listen, God will work all, we need to trust him, even when we can't see him working. So I'm going to see even when I can't see if he's working. Even when I can't feel if he's working. He never stops working on your behalf. You got to what? Trust him. Because he is, come on y'all, he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness. That is who he is. Woo! Is it Sunday yet? Pastor. Yes, sir. I want to tell you the foundation principles. You might have heard, some of you might have heard that Eric and I uh, want to build a handicap raft for disposal. Okay. okay, and we told her that we were going to do it free of charge. Now, not knowing how going to this number or do the job. The other day I was passing by a hotel and I noticed that they were doing renovations. Mm. And they uh, were touring down and I went up to the young man and asked him for some, did he need that material? He said, you can have all the money you want. Wow. Look at that. Everything that Look we that. need. Look at that. Right there in the pie. Look at that. Look at that. Two by four. Look at that. Look at that. You already got it. Oh my goodness gracious. You already got it. Now, if you'd have stolen it, you'd have been trying to bail it out. But, uh, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's how God works, yo. And I get it. It's, it, it, I, it's, it's hard to trust God. So I get it. Let me just help you out with something else, too. After you finish trusting God for something, He's going down the road. Put you in a position where you have to trust him with something even more. Yeah. I, I, I'm just telling you what I know. But I'm just telling you, if you wait and you trust him on the other side, you'll be so blessed, man. Yeah. And, and, and now watch this, y'all. In this last temptation, the devil says, look, Jesus, I'm going to show you all the kingdoms in a moment of time. All these kingdoms, they can be yours. And you would just what? Bow down and worship me. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't sound like, well, it is a bad temptation. But what's interesting about that is that Jesus was going to receive these kingdoms anyway. 
right? Mm -hmm. He's going to be given a name that's above oh. every name, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But what's so tempting about the devil's offer about accepting the kingdoms now? <clears throat> what's so tempting about that? I'll just give them to you. You don't have to wait. It can be given to him what? Now, what was Jesus supposed to do first? What did he come to earth to do? Okay, you came from heaven, heaven to earth too. To show the way from the earth to the my debt to pay. From the cross to the and then from the grave to the sky. So he needed to go through something first in order to get the kingdoms. See it? And what he had to go through was, was excruciating. No one can fathom the depth of pain and suffering he went through. So, if, look, if it had been any one of us, let me just talk about me. If it had been me, if there was an easier way, right? He even asked that in the garden, didn't he? Lord, if there be in what? Another way. But nevertheless, I'll drink this cup of suffering. Because here it is. When Satan makes you an offer like that, y'all, Here's what he wants you to do. He wants you to abort God's plan. He wants you to give up on God's plan. The devil tempted Jesus to think more of himself than the ones God sent him to save. All of my leaders, we don't need to be thinking about ourselves. Thinking about what's good for the people we serve and for the mission of this church and for this gospel. Amen. It'll kill all of the dissension, all of the distrust, all of the contention when we think about what God wants us to do. Not it. But Satan wants us to abort God's plan. It's too hard. It's too costly. It don't take all. But there's a bigger thing involved. We're planted here in Edgemont, man, because people need God's salvation. Got it? We can abort that because it might be too hard. Tempted to avoid godly suffering. Now, no one wants to suffer for the reason. I don't want to let you know. If you're going to be a part of this, if you're going to be a part of this thing, this suffering that's a part of it. Okay? Woe unto these preachers who try to preach to you a gospel with no cross. Okay? Woe to these preachers you can live your best life now because let me tell you, if you're if you, if this is your best life now, you're going to be shook. You're going to hell after this. <laughs> and listen, Jesus said, in this world, tell me again, Julie, you shall. He wants Jesus to receive a crown without going through a Mm -hmm. Am I helping y'all? And he wants him also to tempt him to align with God's enemy. Satan is not desiring him. He's what? God's enemy. And every time we do his building, every time we try to take a shortcut, right? If Jesus, you're worshiping Satan. Every time you try to thwart the plan of God, you're doing Satan's work. You might, watch, watch this, y'all. You may even think you're doing God's work by aborting the plans of God, by getting away of those things. Paul thought the same thing. Oh, I'm getting these Christians. Ah! Then he found out he was fighting against the very God he thought he was serving. You gotta ask yourself, is what I'm doing, is what I'm stopping people from doing, furthering the gospel, or is it hindering the gospel? If you're hitting the gospel, Satan's signing a thank you note too. Hey man, you gotta watch that. You don't want to lie with God's enemy. We don't lie. We don't want to worship Satan. We don't want to worship him by, by doing his work. Okay? And what I love about this, all the kingdoms are gonna be Jesus anyway. Yeah. But you gotta have to go through something first. And what's interesting, and I've thought about this, listen. Adam and Eve had all the trees and all the fruits of the, of the garden, but they focused on the one tree that God said they couldn't have. Why are you going to focus on that instead of focus on what God's giving you? My goodness, y'all could have been full on trees for days. But, so we don't want to take shortcuts for God's will. Now, here it is. Uh, uh, see, why are some shortcuts 
really spiritual short circuits. What happens when you try? You don't think that's the devil? Devil offers you a shortcut, but what it ends up being is a what? Short circuit. Why are some? Why are some uh, shortcuts? Short circuits. Amen. Because shortcut, like God, want, the devil wants to take a shortcut of disobedience, to keep you from being what? Obedient. Obedient. Yeah. Listen, you only have to obey God in this, right? Uh, you know, this is a little shortcut here, right? Amen. Uh, uh, here it is, and that's what he's saying. Oh, what I do? Okay. The devil will offer some tempting shortcuts in place of obedience. Got it? Good. Yeah. Look. I, I, look, God is in me. Church is in me. I can, I, I, look, I'm spiritual enough. I ain't got to come to church. No, I don't do that. Yeah, I'm more spiritual than folk anyway. Right? Watch this, y'all. This God, when I read this, it, it put a, 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 a shiver in my liver, y'all. It really did. Jesus says, what? Look at what Satan says. Put down your cross <laughs> and take up your crown now while it's what? While it's on sale. <laughs> well, it won't cost you what? Nothing. Usually, things that don't cost you nothing ain't <laughs> cheap can be expensive. Yeah. Can be expensive after a while. So Satan always offers you the what? Easy way out. Got it? We need this. And I love what Jesus said. Jesus said, away from me. He said, Can I give y'all the Tom Keys translation? Can I do it? He said, You must have bumped your head on something. Get on out of here. <laughs> away from me, say that's an offer I that's easy to refuse. I can't do what? I don't even have to what? Entertain that. Right? So like that, that, that girl I want to take to the prom, right? You know? And, and I asked her to go to the prom. She said, she said, the chances of me going to prom with you is a million to one. I said, hallelujah, there's still a chance. <laughs> but she was really saying, look, you ain't got no shot. <laughs> and that's what we need to say to say when he makes an offer we need to refuse. We don't even have to entertain. That is an easy one. No. I, I can't, I don't even have to what? Think about it because of the God that I worship. Yes. Our God not only deserves my worship, yes. he desires my worship, and I'm going to give it to him every chance I get. Yes. Is there something yet? Oh my goodness, I love him, person Bob Sutton. Here it is. Let me get out of here with the last question here. All right, before I start shouting all over this place. Now, I'm a, I, what I wanted to do with y'all tonight, and, and you don't have enough time. I wish I thought about this some more. What Jesus used to defeat Satan was some words from the scriptures, right? <clears throat> what I wanted to, to do as an exercise is to have you in your groups find some words for trust, find some words for obedience, and find some words for true worship that will help you every time the devil comes with you in one of those offers. Now, I'm going to give you these in the interest of time. Uh, trust. Seek first what? And his righteousness. How many things? Oh, so you can trust God when you seek him first. Got it? Obedience. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he, will he withhold from them that what? Walk uprightly. You do what you're supposed to do. You follow God. You worship him and trust him. He will, and I'm a living witness, he will provide for all of your needs. Amen. Let me, I don't want to be too transparent. There were times I made a holy mess of my finances and God still provided for me. Amen. I don't recommend you do that. But, <laughs> but here's, here's the other thing. True worship. And I love this one, Sister Judy. I love this. Man, because David said, I will what? At all times, his praise shall sometimes be in my mouth. Continue when I got money, when I ain't got money. When people like me, when they don't. When people come to the church, when they don't, I still will bless the Lord at what? All times. As a matter of fact, let's put a blessing in the house right now to let the Lord know it. He will praise him. Yeah. 
just a little. Do good. Delight yourself in God like he wants you to do. And he will give you. Yeah, now, let me, let me qualify that. If you desire a Bentley, I'm not sure you're going to get that. But he'll give you, he'll give you the right desires. So you can desire what? The right things. And let me help you out with this. Even some of the things that he, you might desire, God's got something even greater for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because you can't beat God. Yeah. Question the comments about our lesson tonight. I hope this was helpful. It was helpful for me, man. I enjoyed this. I'm sweating my way to Let me give you all some keys for you today. And then, uh, here, here's something. Y'all need to get this. I, y'all already got it, but I might give it to you. See, Satan chooses at times, watch this, y'all, when we're, when we're at a spiritual peak and we're in our spiritual valleys to launch his attacks. Don't think just because you preach a rocking sermon, people got saved, Satan won't leave you alone. He'll come at you then. He doesn't wait to you he'll wait when you be high or no Satan will come at you. He knows the right temptation to get you where you are. So be on what? On guard for him. Amen. A, de- a deceiver, we use the word what? Accurately quoted, but in his attempt, what? True believers. And don't think you can't be deceived. Okay? That's true. Yep. He got, some, he got some smooth talking jokers out there. Mm-hmm. Amen. And the sa- and I love this. This this part made me shout, y'all. The same weapons Jesus used to defeat Satan are available to how many believers? Yeah. All of us, young people, old people, middle-aged people. Amen. Deacons, not deacons, lay people. We have the same weapons, and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are what? Mighty through God. Weapons like prayer, weapons like the word, weapons like worship. Y'all some mighty folks, because you got weapons that the devil cannot defeat. But you got to know that you got them. You got to know who you are in Christ. More than a conqueror. You ain't got to fall for his tricks. Amen. You're stronger than that. You're smarter than that. Your God is greater than that. And even when, even when devil, the devil does his worst, God can turn that around for your good and his glory. Right. Right. Woo! Yes, sir. Jesus knew that no matter what the devil said to him, by his hands, he couldn't defeat Yeah, God. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's one part in, in the lesson we didn't cover, but after the devil left him, <laughs> The angels came mm-hmm. and ministered to him. So God said, right. But watch this, y'all. The, de- the other uh, gospel said, he left him until he what? More opportune time. <laughs> so just because you kicked that turkey out your house one day, he going to come in the back door. Okay, so keep watching for him. Questions or comments until we close? All right, I hope this was helpful to y'all. Amen. Uh, let me give you one last scripture I want you to, to, to watch, to, to be a part of. I want you to do one of my favorite scriptures. Now, the beginning part says there's no temptation that nobody else has faced, okay? You can't say you're the only one. But here's a point you need to get. God is what? Faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. When you are tempted, he'll give you a way out. You've got to be looking for it, though. Okay? Now, some people use that and say that God won't put more on you than you can bear. That's not what that scripture says. He says he won't tempt you. He'll put more on you so you can try out him. <laughs> But when it comes to temptation, you know, God will give you everything you need to stay safe. And here's the other part, too. Even when we mess up, even when we fall, and we all will, he will forgive you when you ask him, cleanse you, and give you a new start. Anybody here ever had a new start? <laughs> Let me help y'all. I got a new start this morning. Okay? Okay? Got it? Questions, comments? All right, y'all. Let's um, let's gather around in prayer. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I just sing now. Yeah.